Well, greetings, church family. Today's daily Bible reading had us in Isaiah chapters 64 and 65. In chapter 64, verses 1 through 7, we see God rejected by man. And beginning this chapter, we see the declaration, first of all, how awesome God is in his character and the deeds he's shown towards Israel and saving them out of Egypt. In fact, that's what verse 2 is referring to. That set of mighty deeds by the Lord proved his great power over Israel. Egypt. And remember, that was one of the world superpowers at the time. So that made the Lord's name known so that his adversaries would tremble. The nations would tremble. And those awesome deeds continued in the wilderness with the highlight being his appearing on Mount Sinai, verse 3. But despite the recognition that there is no object of worship equal to God's stature, verse 4, His people still willfully rebelled against him, committing great iniquity, being given over into that sin, verses 5 through 7 express. Verse 6, we see that even mankind's righteous deeds apart from the Lord's direct supervision and intervention, they're like filthy garments because of the stain of sin. Any trust in deeds of righteousness uh, for any sort of salvation or proving that we can righteously stand before the Lord. Well, that makes them filthy garments. It has to be complete faith in the Lord first and foremost, and then living out the righteousness that he for thee provides. Chapter 64, 8 through 12, there's a plea for mercy. And notice how humble and contrite this admission and plea is. There's a recognition in verse 8 that God is Father, and we belong to him to be used by him however he wants. And so there's this plea for mercy and forgiveness, which involves the Lord holding back his fiery and just wrath. Then we get to chapter 65, 1 through 7, Yahweh's rebuke of his people. Just as the people admitted to their sin in the last chapter, now the Lord agrees with them, rebuking them for their iniquity. Notice verse 2 here. What a really sad yet accurate statement of all of us as sinners. Verse 2, God says, I have spread out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in the way which is not good, following their own thoughts. When we sin, that's what we're doing. We're walking in the way which is not good. We're following our own thoughts. We are rebelling against the Lord. Verse 3, we're continually provoking him when we remain in that sin. Now, verse 7, when you read down there, God says both their own iniquities and the iniquities of their fathers together, that is what he's going to repay them. This is only true, remember, in a national sense, or it was true in a national sense, under the Mosaic Covenant, as Leviticus 26 says, in Deuteronomy 28 express. Not true in a personal sense. Ezekiel 18.20 provides that personal explanation that uh, a father's sins will not be punished onto the son and vice versa. So what's being spoken of here in verse 7 is the promise from the Lord. He is going to fulfill, and he would, and he did fulfill what he promised in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, that because of their sin, eventually the generations of Judah at the time of Babylon would be uh, taken by that foreign nation. They'd be going into exile. Well, then we get to chapter 65, 8 through 16, Yahweh's judgment and restoration. Lord did promise judgment on his wayward people. That, again, as we just said, would happen at the hands of Babylon via Judah's exile there. That's what's being spoken of in verses 11 and 12. But he also promised to preserve some of his people, bringing them back from exile, as we see in verses 8 through 10. And that keeping a remnant for himself, that actually extends to the remnant that the Lord will preserve during the end times. Those who will experience these marvelous blessings at the hand of the Lord that are spoken of in verses 13 through 16. And then we get the promise of wonderful blessings in chapter 65, 17 through 25. First, verses 17 through 19. And the language of these two verses is clearly a reference to the culmination of the end times. After the reign of Christ on this earth, notice if you just turn at one point to Revelation 21, 1 through 4 and compare. See how it corresponds to that new heavens and a new earth that are recreated. But then we get to verses 20 through 25, and what happens is is we get this prophecy that's clearly now not speaking of the culmination of the end times, but rather the time right before it. So what you have is verses 17 through 19, you have the, the eternal existence, the everlasting existence in the new Jerusalem on the new earth after the Lord has recreated the heavens and the earth. And then we're pulled back a little bit in verses 20 through 25 to the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. How do we know that? Well, 
There's this prophecy in verse 20 of youth dying at the age of 100 and those who don't live to the age of 100 being accursed. Well, that's not going to happen after the new heavens and new earth. That's going to be something that has to occur while there is still death, and that will be during Christ's millennial reign on this earth. There's also the building of houses to live in, verse 21. The bearing of children, verse 23. That indicates that the Lord, after he points, first of all, to the end of the end times, he then points to right before the very end of the end times, after the tribulation, Christ return in Revelation 19, and then it's his reign that we see in Revelation 20, that 1,000 literal years on this earth. That's what these uh, six verses here at the tail end of chapter 65 are pointing to. And when you think of the long lives that mankind enjoyed prior to the great flood, which so radically transformed the surface of the earth, you see that the messianic millennial reign of Jesus will bring back a return to those lengthy lifespans. Remember that those those fellows, most of them were living to the age of 900 and something, right? Well, Christ is going to reign 4,000 years. And so we'll see these long lives for those who belong to the Lord. And there's going to be children born probably to believers who survive the tribulation and enter into the kingdom without having a perfectly glorified body because they had not died yet. And they bear children, and those children and their children, some of them, and actually a lot of them we see in Revelation 20, will turn against the Lord. These are the ones that uh, will not be living to the age of 100. It's a lot to get our minds wrapped around. But we also see uh, another promise here, uh, as already promised in chapter 11, 6 and 7. There's going to be this perfect peace all over the earth when Christ reigns. Even animals will be peaceful with one another. Well, the end times are going to come suddenly, so how ought we to live in anticipation of that day. Well, if we look at 2 Peter 3, 10 through the beginning of verse 15, this is what we read. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. And since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we're looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. While we look forward to the Lord's return in the new heavens and the new earth, we need to be living rightly now that we would be seeking to grow in holy conduct and godliness, that we would be diligent to grow in being at peace and spotless and blameless, and that we would see the waiting of the Lord, the tarrying of the Lord as patience by which he's going to use to bring about people to salvation. Let's use that time to proclaim the gospel to the lost as well. And this has been Isaiah chapters 64 and 65, and I hope you have a great day.